Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ventral Visionaries podcast. I'm your host, Fred Schonenberg. On today's show, we have Marita McGinn. Marita is the director of Mass Robotics Accelerator. So Mass Robotics is the largest independent robotics hub that accelerates robotics innovation and adoption. And Marita is at the forefront of this robotics innovation, guiding startups through a unique equity-free program that combines funding, mentorship, and a collaborative community. Her passion is and has always been for supporting entrepreneurs, which we'll get into, uh, but previously she was VP of Startup Banking at Silicon Valley Bank, as well as working at both Techstars and Indiegogo. Today, we're going to talk about the future of robotics, the value of equity-free accelerators, and how to help early stage startups commercialize their products. So please join me in welcoming Rita McGinn. Rita, welcome to the show. I'm so excited Thank to you, have Fred. you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Yeah, this is awesome. I, I'm a huge fan and I think this is going to be a great chat. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's our, our pleasure. And uh, I have to say, I just came from the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, where it's, you know, Robotics Palooza. So this is a this is a great conversation to have coming off the heels of that. <laughs> That's awesome. I, uh, I didn't go this year, but we did have a mass robotics booth. So if you saw any interesting robots, and hopefully some of them were residents of ours. Oh, yeah, you know, we, we, we saw it. Uh, and it was it was truly, uh, as always, uh, there, there's a lot of noise there, but a lot of signal too. So it's a, it's a fun conference to go to. Um, I know I did a little bit of this, but could you maybe uh, introduce yourself, give an overview of, of your background and history and what brought you uh, to Mass Robotics Accelerator? Yeah, uh, of course. So I have been at Mass Robotics now since September, so for a few months. But I've been a huge fan of Mass Robotics and the team who's built Mass Robotics for the past five years. Uh, they are a huge pillar in Boston. Like when you think of Mass Robotics in Boston, it always comes back to this amazing community that Tom and Joyce have created, the, the two leaders here. So I, I met Mass Robotics about five years ago. I was running the Air Force Accelerator with Techstars at the time and I was super involved working with technical founders and this past June, I was at Silicon Valley Bank, and I think as many SVBers, we kind of thought through, okay, what do I want to do next after this big moment in our careers? And I, I spent a little time off. I actually took the entire summer off and uh, enjoyed time with family. And I realized I wanted to be back within a more mission-oriented role. Yeah. Um, I've always worked with early-stage companies, and I, I get a lot out of working with founders. You know, I'm sure you have something similar. I, yeah. Entrepreneurs are absolutely fascinating. And I don't know if I'll ever be one, but I want to be a supporter of entrepreneurship. And specifically in Boston, I wanted to be at a place where I could get back into the sort of entrepreneurial ecosystem building that I loved early in my career. So yeah, I, uh, I learned of this accelerator that Mass Robotics is spinning up and um, it was, a, it, it really is a person a perfect sort of dream job opportunity for me. So yeah, it's a great fit. I love it. And I, I think it's funny the like working with uh, founders, it's, you know, somebody was asking me about the the origin of Venture Fuel's name. Uh, and, and there's a good story behind that, which I won't bore you with, but I also think of it as uh, there's like this injection, right? Whether you call it fuel or whatever it is of like enthusiasm, energy, can do-ness of working with startups that inherently comes anytime we're working with any corporates or running an accelerator or anything like that. Uh, there's just something about it that, that makes you believe in humanity uh, and, and gets you out of bed with a little, little more pep to your step. Uh, so. Oh, I, I, absolutely. I yeah. Love, I, I mean, all great. of these folks are they're They're just amazing. I, I think entrepreneurs are awesome because they are experts in some sort of incredible thing that few people are experts in especially technical founders, but they're not business people. And I think that's where uh, our, our program, especially the, the accelerator is really going to lean in. I love it. So let, let's turn to the accelerator itself. Uh, sure. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, its mission uh, and, and what is unique about this program? Obviously you have experience in the accelerator sort of ecosystem. So curious what attracted you to this program and what is, uh, what is special about it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Mass Robotics is, is kicking off our first program here. Uh, the idea is that this is going to be an annual accelerator that we do every year. Uh, the mission of the accelerator is to really help technical founders bolster their business acumen. So our entire curriculum is centered around topics like 
uh, value prop discovery, understanding how to actually run great customer discovery interviews, how to build your team and, and define roles. Uh, and then also fundraising in particular with hardware. I think that's, you know, we all know that's really challenging. So the real mission is to bring 10 technical founders through a, a program to help them with the business side of running their um, their business and their startup. And the, the main distinction and differentiator, and candidly, this is a big reason why I joined Mass Robotics, is that our accelerator is equity free. Yeah. So we are not taking any equity of the startups, but we are seeding each company with 100,000 in non-dilutive funding. So it just feels extremely empowering and exciting to have the sum of money that we're going to be uh, granting to each startup. And that comes from our partnership with uh, the Massachusetts Technology Collaborative. They've been a phenomenal partner to us. Um, this is Massachusetts state money. So they care about job growth and keeping robotics in Massachusetts. There's all sorts of reasons why the state of Massachusetts is doing this. Yeah. But really, I think when it comes down to mass robotics, we're a nonprofit and our entire mission is to help the robotics community, um, not just in Massachusetts, but all over the world. Yeah. We, we ended up with 140 applications from 35 different countries. So there's clearly a huge need for business help for technical founders, specifically in robotics. So yeah, we're feeling really excited about getting started. I, I love it. And I would love to to dive in a little bit on this, the sort of the non-equity or equity-free, non-dilutive piece of it. Uh, we, it's, it's a big part of Venture Fuel's recommendation to our corporate partners. Uh, and it's usually if they're new to this world, the immediate reaction is like, so wait a second, I'm going to give a founder money and I don't get the upside. Why am I doing this? Right. And and we kind of walk them through our point of view on the, the value there. But I, I would love to understand from your vantage point why that was important to attract you, why, why you yeah. believe that formula works. So I... I actually, my, my first day at Mass Robotics, I sat down with Tom Ryden, who's the executive director, and I asked him the question, why isn't Mass Robotics a nonprofit to begin with? And I loved his answer. Um, and it's really a tangential to why this program is equity free. It's because we want to be able to help every startup that needs us. And as you know, large corporates and, and VCs, they're looking for the biggest return on their dollars. And with our, with our nonprofit model and the equity free model, our breadth of who we can actually help increases tenfold. Yeah. You know, I, this is our first program. I want to have some amazing successes in there. And I think this, the 10 startups that we've selected, it's going to come true, but we also have an assistive technology company that is doing incredible work for the users that they're actually helping, but who knows if they're going to be a huge business, right? Assistive technology, it might not be super VC backable, but their technology needs help and their founders can really use this, this work, this technical and, and uh, you know, more business work. So I think with the equity free piece, it feels like the right thing to do. I, I don't think we ever had a question of, you know, should we do the typical accelerator model of take six, eight percent? Right, right. It doesn't feel as founder friendly as we want to be. And I, I think the fact that we are a nonprofit is really the key there. You know, this is our, our business, the business of helping startups, but for free. You know, what's, what's interesting is I agree with everything you said. And I would also add that even if you weren't a nonprofit, I think one of the things you touched on there is, is really important for anybody thinking about an accelerator or working with startups, which is like, when you go to that 6% equity, you know, sort of default, uh, the breadth of companies you can consider immediately winnows down to like this group, right? Because you have companies that are later stage or that believe mm -hmm. they have a higher valuation than what the 6% for hundred grand or whatever it might be is, as well as you nailed the most important thing to me, which is like the startup might not be venture backable. It might not be a 30 X return, but it might solve the problem that you were trying, yeah. the reason, the whole reason for being of the accelerator, there could be a startup that does that thing. 
that isn't venture backable, right? And so we're always like, hey, decide what your real goal is. Do you want to become a micro investment fund in early stage, you know, VC essentially? Then let's look at the equity piece. If your goal is different than that, uh, there's so many different models and ways to do things uh, that are benefit both the startup, but also whoever's paying for it at the end of the day. Right. And, you know, like maybe this model will change. We'll see. We we are in the very early stages of trying to suss out how to build a, a really great robotics accelerator. I think we're we're pretty much there. But who knows? In the next couple of years, maybe we start a fund and we get to start investing in these companies post program. There's all sorts of different ideas that we have. Yeah. And, you know, I also think so many of these early stage accelerators it's so hard to tell who is actually going to be successful. Yeah. So a big emphasis for our selection for this first year's cohort, it's almost all about team and traction. Yeah. Um, you know, the idea for us is way less important because it it can change. So uh, we are absolutely working with the brightest founders um, and we're, we're so excited about it. I love it. And, and I will say, I, I love the comment of like, it doesn't mean you can't invest maybe post-program, right? Maybe there's yeah. a fund maybe there. So we, we've done a few, obviously, uh, a whole bunch of different accelerators, but what we've seen that's a pretty interesting trend is this idea of non-equity for the accelerator with your corporate venture team sitting there seeing, okay, over the course of this program, we found mm -hmm. that 10 best out of 140, but of those 10, three are really like, have this like great synergy, big explosive opportunity and two others have, some other commercial Absolutely. viability, right? But like it gives you that flexibility to then use your powder on the ones that make sense as an investment and use other funds or other uh, vehicles for the, the ones that have a different outcome. So I, yeah. I love I love the flexibility in the model. One of the things you also have done, and uh, maybe the nonprofit piece plays a role in this, but that I really respect is the community. Uh, you have a number of organizations, universities, uh, and other folks that are coming together uh, with you and the founders. Uh, and, and I would love to understand your vantage point about how that community contributes to the success of the overall program. 100%. I, so I've been working here now for about three months and I truly am blown away by one, the caliber of our community. Like we have some incredible people who are, excited to just be down to earth with our startups. They have some pretty big names, like the general public will know about them, but they act just like any other person and mentor. So that aspect is really helpful for me to see. And honestly, like I, I just credit Tom Ryden and, and, jo and Joyce Sadopoulos, the, the leaders of Mass Robotics with the community that they've built. Um, there is a, like the in the Boston startup ecosystem, it's pretty small and people, for the most part, know everyone. And I think because we're such a mission oriented organization, people want to help. It's sort of like that we have this attitude of never asking for anything in return. Like we really don't expect and a lot of, a lot of companies say that. Right. right. And um, so I, I actually have been hearing it my entire career, uh, but I am so fired up about sort of just how really gracious Mass Robotics is. Um, I, I think Tom and Joyce have done a phenomenal job of orchestrating this very well tight knit community and even just the way our, our model works. So Mass Robotics, we have 85 residents. Uh, those are startups who are building their products at Mass Robotics and at our, our prototyping lab. And they range from you know, idea on a napkin just incorporated to shipping hundreds of units. Like there's a really big range of uh, just startup stage and they're all building in the same room, which is really unique. Like we have all of these companies helping one another. The community is really tight knit. You know, I, I just love our team. I mean, even today we did um, a, a resident brunch and we had one of our founders, they're called Bridge Appliances, and they have a commercial egg making robot, and yeah. they made brunch for everyone. Like, What an awesome show of community. So That's yeah, cool. I'm pretty blown away by Mass Robotics. I, I, just, I really love it. I feel very lucky to be here.
I, I love that. So let, let me ask you this along those lines, uh, whether it's uh, residents uh, that you've met or applicants uh, that you would want to talk, talk about, talk about some of the groundbreaking or unexpected innovations uh, that you've seen within those four walls uh, that you'd want to tell people about. Yeah. Wow. So we, we, we have such a diverse group of robotic technologies here. Um, we basically have every industry covered. I'll, I'll share one of my favorite residents right now. I try not to play favorites, but I tried their products the other day and I was totally blown away by them. So the company is called Glidance. They are a startup that's based out of Seattle, and they have created a robotic walking cane for people who are blind or vision impaired. Hmm. And it, you basically hold on to it, and it almost feels like a uh, like a walking dog, uh, a seeing eye dog, rather. So I've had the chance to play around with it. You stand right next to it, and it literally glides you around. Um, and guides you. It's called the Glidance. Yeah, I love uh, the so name. The glide. Um, it. And it, it just walks you around and it makes sure that you're um, watching out for any obstacles. It actually has haptics. So if something runs out in front of you, like a dog or I don't know, a, a kid's toy, um, yeah. it'll actually stop you right in your tracks. And it just completely blew me away. And ever since I, I started, you know, actually using their product, I've now been seeing older people just in real life, like a couple of days ago, I was walking my dog and this person is learning how to use a cane yeah. because they're vision impaired. They're getting older. I think their technology is amazing. They were also at CES this year and Stevie Wonder actually used their product, which is so awesome. Um, yeah, I guess he goes every year and um, he, he tested it out. So yeah, I think they're really impressive. Yeah, that's that's very cool. Uh, both Stevie Wonder and also Glidance. I think that's amazing. Uh, okay, so let me ask you this. I'm going to flip to the other side of robotics because I think of it as like the ultimate ultimate like enabler uh, in terms of of helping humans be like a co pilot, right? Kind of vibe. But with robotics, immediately people think of automation and job replacement. How do you all see this sort of the robotics automation world enabling versus being a replacer? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I really think in any kind of real innovative technology space, we could, we could think there's tons of job replacers and really any type of novel technology, yeah. but within robotics, I, I think our technologists who are building these amazing robot, robot technologies and cobots and AMRs, they're helping people do more people things. So, you know, like the people are curious and they're connected and they like to collaborate. And I think we should be doing work that stimulates our inherent needs of wanting to build relationships and do more strategic thinking. You know, I, especially within the halls of mass robotics, I walk around and I'm seeing these technologies that, can really help people get away from more task-based work and toward more important work, toward the work that actually stimulates their, their minds. And not to mention, a lot of these robots are keeping people safe. Um, one startup that I'll, I'll mention is called Clio Robotics. They are building, they call it the Dronut. It's very cool. Um, it's, a, it's a drone that has all the propellers on the inside. and mm -hmm. It's using for all sorts of different inspections or um, active shooting. The police have been using it in those type of ways. Their product is saving, literally saving people's lives. And that's so important. And, and I, I just am so excited by the variety of applications around robotics. I, especially in, the, in Boston, there, there's just a huge acceptance of new types of technologies. So besides uh, being unbelievably well named, right? Glidance and Dronuts, both of those are like <laughs> A plus, like, but like unique, right? Like I always joke that anytime I see uh, a word without a vowel where it should be, I'm like, oh, here comes the startup, right? They always <laughs> drop the vowel to try and seem futuristic. Mm -hmm. Those two mm -hmm. are names that like tell yeah. you something. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with those. But uh, on top of that, 
what's next in robotics? And, and I ask this because you're living and breathing it every day. You're walking around, you've got 85 of the top innovators in robotics there. Most people listening do not have that purview. Uh, I'm curious if there's anything when you think about that room uh, or those creators, what do you think that the general public maybe doesn't see coming that's really exciting within robotics in the next mm -hmm. couple of years? Yeah. Uh, so I think the, the blanket answer, and I'll give you my personal answer. I think that the blanket answer is robotics is going to touch everything, right? So even in our application pool, the, the top were logistics, manufacturing, and healthcare. Healthcare was a surprising one for me. Um, I, I didn't think there would be so many companies that are building robotic applications within, you know, all, all sorts of different surgical or um, even mental health robots. Like there's a lot of robotic innovation in the world of healthcare that I, I think those companies need a lot of assistance and help. So I'm excited to kind of double down there. One thing I care about is food. Um, I, I think our access to healthy food is extremely important. It's something I'm really passionate about. So I think ag tech um, within the world of agriculture is yeah. going to be huge. I actually got to sit in on, um, I went to uh, Robo Business this past year in Santa Clara and the director of innovation for John Deere spoke and they showed us the life cycle of a farmer and how farmers can use robotic innovations on in their, their time and in their fields. It was fascinating to watch. And in our program, we, we do have a couple of ag related startups in our, our 10 startups that we'll announce. And I'm looking forward to seeing how robots can help us live healthier and eat healthy food. I love that. And we work uh, a lot with uh, farmers in California uh, for one of our programs. We're year six of this program. Uh, and cool. every year we take our founders out to visit the farms uh, and we go to a different farm and just sort of like, you know, get to the land, understand who you're working with kind of thing. Uh, and I'm blown away by over those six years, seeing how technology mm -hmm. is becoming a bigger part of life on the farm uh, and trying to increase yields, right? Lower costs, be more organic, all the things. Uh, and it's, it's really amazing to see that space uh, evolving very, very quickly. So I love okay. that they, uh, as, as a sort of future place to watch. Let me ask you this. On, we talk all the time to large traditional organizations, right? think Fortune 500s. Yep. And a lot of them are just now starting to think about the potential of working with and in robotics and new technologies. So think John Deere five years ago. Right, or maybe even seven years ago, they're very they're very out there at the forefront. What mm -hmm. advice would you have for a company, big organization that's going, hey, we've done it this way for 75 years. We know there might be yep. interesting applications out there, but how do they even get started? This is a great question. Corporates are a huge part of the startup ecosystem and they are an important player. Uh, Mass Robotics has about 100 corporate partners that we work with in all sorts of different ways, and they're extremely startup friendly. I think that's why we love working with them. But for companies that are just getting started within working with startups, my, my advice is always just walk the walk. I think a lot of large corporates just find startups to be super sexy, and it's kind of fun that that sort of entrepreneurship aspect can be there. But if you're someone who is a decision maker and really cares about helping startups within a large organization, there's a really good chance you can actually help an entrepreneur and doubling down on really getting to know the founders in your community. You know, like a couple of corporates that do this great um, in Boston or Silicon Valley Bank and JP Morgan, they put on amazing events and listen to startups and really ask them what they need and they always execute so really getting to know your you know your startups in your local community i also you know there, there's a lot of different ways to help startups with funding mentorship um, many corporates have like poc um, startup programs but i want to highlight the funding piece 
I think many corporate accelerators and um, corporates in general do a really great job of offering guidance on how to work with them or mentorship. But I think funding is the absolute most important thing a corporate can offer. Um, you know, building a hardware product, especially a, a robot, is amazingly difficult. And right. corporates who have cash and can give it via a grant or even become an investor, I think is really that's tangible and that's walking the walk. Love it. Marita. So let me ask you this, where would you want our audience to go to learn more about your program? Awesome. So we're kicking off uh, February 5th and our program ends on May 2nd. We're going to culminate at the robotics summit and expo in Boston. Um, you're all welcome. And folks who are interested in learning about the program can go to the mass robotics website. I'm also always down to have a conversation with someone. So you can find my LinkedIn, reach out. I'm super active there. We'll kick off our 2025 applicant period, likely in September. So keep an eye out. Um, any robotics founders who are excited to apply, it's really awesome opportunity. Again, equity free. And we're giving 100K in non daily capital to each startup. I love it. Well, I'm, I'm going to come check out the summit in person uh, for sure and get some of my team up there because uh, it's exciting what you all are doing. And, and thank you for taking the time to share what you're doing uh, and for everything you're doing to, to kind of drive change uh, in the robotics scene. Thanks so much. This has been awesome. Thank you, Fred.